John here. Here's the quick walkthrough of that G minor pentatonic picking lick. Uh, I initially got the sequence from Key Marcello from Europe or previously in Europe. So if you're not familiar with his, with his playing, you should check out uh, Out of This World and Prisoners in Paradise by Europe. He's also had some guest solos on Joe Tafoya's uh, Infra Blue album and among other things. So amazing player, huge influence of mine. So this pentatonic sequence thing is totally a thing I ripped off that guy. So, you know, credit work, credit is due. So check him out if you haven't already. That said, let's just get going here. And if you want tabs, you have everything you need in the description. And uh, yeah, that's about it. It's in G minor, G minor pentatonic. And we're gonna use three note string uh, fingerings the whole time. And the sequence is pretty easy to remember. It's just five notes on each string, all alternate picked. So I'm gonna start here in 15th position. So basically the frets here would be 15, 18, 20. So uh, we start here on the middle note. So if you number the notes from left to right, one, two, three, the sequence will be two, one, three, two, one. So five notes, so starting with a downstroke. You repeat that on the, exactly the same frets on the B string. And you move it down to the next set of three notes. So we got uh, 13, 15, 18 on both strings. So. Move it down again. And now we will have a slight, slightly different fingering on the B string here, but the E string we have 10, 13, 15. And then we move the index finger up one fret to get 11, 13, 15 on the B string. And you continue on to the G string and here we're gonna use uh, 10, 12, 15. Same thing on the D string. And the A string will be the same as the E string, so 10, 13, 15. And then back to the flat 7 of the key. So that's basically it. So if I do that again, but put them all together, starting with a downstroke. So when I play this fast, uh, sometimes, for whatever reason, I tend to do economy picking when I go to the lower strings. It's not really been a conscious choice for me, but I, I've noticed that since I, you know, I basically record my guitar playing for a living, so I noticed that that seemed to happen. Usually I'm very uh, conscious about whether I'm doing alternate picking or economy picking, but in this case, I just kind of go with whatever happens. I could do all alternate picking as well, but for whatever reason, this seems to happen on the lower strings. So, uh, so once you get to this point, here makes sense to do all alternate picking. But from here, if you want, uh, you can actually from the upstroke here on the B string, and since we have an odd number, which is basically uh, the the number you need, uh, any odd number will work to be able to keep the same picking through the next string uh, in whatever direction you're going. So meaning in this case we start with an upstroke, so we got up, down, up, down, up, and then we do the same thing on the next one, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up. But for whatever reason when I played it fast I don't do it from this string, I do it from from here. It's really only the, the last two strings here. I don't know why, but that's just what happens. You can also alternate pick it. But I, for whatever reason, it feels good for me to just go uh, economy picking. But in this case, uh, you don't really hear a difference in sound, and you really shouldn't either. So. Uh, I just went with what felt comfortable for me, and if the sound wasn't to my liking, 
I would definitely do whatever technique would give me the sound that I want. So uh, basically that's my guiding principle. If it sounds good, I'm good. If it sounds wrong, but it's easier, I will correct it and make sure that I get the sound correct instead. But uh, that being said, I wouldn't freak out too much if you notice this happens to you, as long as it works out and you don't find that you do sort of random picking and things just happen uh, and you're not in control and you do it differently every time, then it's more of a problem. But if you notice that some, sometimes you do it one way and sometimes you do it that way, in this case, meaning alternate picking or economy picking, and you still like the sound, then it's all good. No one cares, right? So uh, again, try both ways and see what works for you. But if you want to be the more efficient way, you, you probably want to do economy picking from this upstroke here. So you might keep that, keep that in mind as well. But anyway, one more time from the beginning with the neck pickup, so. And as you know, I like to go through ways to practice this and not just focus on the particular lick at hand. So in this case, you can spend a lot of time just working on each position in itself. You can put on a timer and just repeat the first two strings here, just over and over again. So just go. Just put on an episode of Rick and Morty and then you do one episode. And you do the next episode. I'm only half kidding here because you can do this for a lot of reps and the more reps you do in general, the better off you will be. But obviously listen to your body. So if it feels bad, don't do it for that long. But uh, you can definitely repeat things for longer than five minutes or 10 minutes. Uh, as long as you do it at a sensible pace and you get every rep as clean as you want it. So keep that in mind and give it a try. Also, you can play through the entire thing, but you change the subdivision. So instead of doing 16 notes as I noted it, notated it, so you would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. You can try maybe doing only triplets. Or try groups of five. This works really well with this one since it's basically five notes per string. So you go one and two and three, 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 one. And the way that I counted here was a way that I learned from Mike Mangini's rhythm knowledge books. Really great books. And he talks about counting stuff. Basically, he would count four notes per beat, one and two and, and then five notes, one and two and three, six notes, one and two and three and, and so on. Uh, and the good thing about counting that way, instead of going one yen or two yen and all that stuff, is that it becomes a fairly easy system to understand. So if you want to count seven notes per beat, you would go one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four, one and two and three and four. And while doing that, you, you get rid of the problem of having to say seven, for example, uh, or having this weird, I know that, for example, uh, quintuplets, five notes per beat, some people do university, 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 I think that's just weird. So I'd rather go one and two and three, one and two and three, one and two and three, one and two and three. Anyway, that's what I did here if you were confused while I was counting one and two and three. Uh, so. The whole idea here is that you do different subdivisions uh, and you can lower the tempo. So if you do 16th notes at 60 BPMs, you might do quintuplets slightly lower than that. So you can keep the tempo the same, but you play a different grouping because all these different groupings will let you hear the lick from a different perspective and that will help you uh, even out your string changes and you will also find that, oh, okay, this note is actually a bit out of time uh, 
and you maybe you didn't notice that when you did it in a certain subdivision because maybe it's the last note on the string and you know it's all kinds of things like this that can happen when you uh, play things the same way all the time we almost get uh, blind spots uh, so by going through licks in different subdivisions and all, all subdivisions are is basically how many notes do you fit in on each click of the metronome or the downbeat so I think everyone should be really comfortable with subdivisions one through eight, meaning one note per beat, two notes per beat, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then you can go beyond that as well. And like I said, uh, Mike Mangini's Rhythm Knowledge book's really good for that. So I bought these back in uh, 99, I think, and I got a lot of use out of them. So I will talk more about this eventually as well, about these subdivisions, because I think it's really important. But for now, just try a few different ones. So maybe 16th notes, 16th note triplets, 32nd notes, regular triplets, just different ones that you go through the whole lick with. Uh, and of course, as usual, you should start this in uh, another point in the scale. So instead of starting here, maybe start up, up here. And then go on from there. So you basically have as many variations on the lick as you have notes in the scale and the pentatonic scale is five notes and we only did one version now so you have four more to explore and uh, if you do that you'll find that the neck will just open up naturally for you so it's a great way to expand your fretboard knowledge while actually working on specific licks as well so that's it for today and if you have any questions just post them below as usual otherwise see you in the next lesson